Okay, so now let's start with Teradata architecture. Teradata architecture is divided into two parts. First part is Teradata logical architecture. Second part is Teradata advanced architecture. So first we will look into this logical architecture. Biggest strength of Teradata is the parallelism. Architecture of Teradata is designed in such a way to keep this strength in mind. Teradata is unique from any other database because of its unique architecture only. Main component of Teradata architecture are parsing engine, AMP that is uh, full form is access module processor and binet. So guys in this architecture we will see that parallelism is implemented right in the architecture and three main components form the Teradata architecture they are PE full form is parsing engine, app, access module processor and binet. So let's look into more details about each of this component. This is the logical view or logical diagram of Teradata architecture. You can see that on top we have PE that is parsing engine. It is connected with BiNet framework and from BiNet each AMP is connected. In this diagram I am showing 4 AMP system. So that is why you can see 4 AMP here. Each AMP is connected with its own disk. This connection is native to the AMP only and there is no cross connection between other AMPs. Just keep this image in mind guys. Uh, we will cover each of this component but let me tell you why we are calling it as logical view because if you open Teradata server or Teradata node you won't find this component like this this diagram or this view is only for us to understand the overall architecture just for the sake of simplicity to understand this architecture when we will cover advanced architecture I will show you exactly how these components will look inside node but first of all, let's understand what are these components and what are their main functionality. So first of all, we will look into the parsing engine that is PE. Whenever a user log into Teradata, it actually connect to parsing engine. When a user submits a query, then parsing engine takes action. It creates a plan and instructs AMP what to do in order to get the result from the query. So parsing engine is our first point of contact with Teradata. Whenever you as a user is uh, lo uh, logging to Teradata and connecting with Teradata, you will actually connect to Parsing Engine. Then Parsing Engine will do all the administrative tasks. Uh, it will check your query, it will create an explain plan and then this explain plan will be passed to AMPs with the help of PyNet. So all the majority administrative task is done by Parsing Engine only. Each parsing engine can support a maximum of 120 session. One session we can consider as one connection between a user and Teradata. As soon as you connect to Teradata, that is called as one session. And at any given time, a single parsing engine can support 120 session. This is the maximum limit imposed in Teradata. The parsing engine knows all. It knows how many arms are connected to Teradata how many rows are in the table and what is the best possible plan to execute the query. Because parsing engine is responsible to create the plan which is the best possible plan to execute the query. Uh, it is mandatory that parsing engine should have complete knowledge about the system. How many amps are connected, uh, how many rows are in the table, how many disk space is unutilized, all this information parsing engine should know. Now parsing engine is actually a single component. It is further divided into four parts. That is we have sub components in parsing engine that is called as session control, parser, optimizer and dispatcher. So let's look into each of this component because the overall activity, this administrative activity and this creation of possible plan is actually uh, 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 is actually executed by these sub components only. So let's look into one of uh, all of these uh, sub components one by one. Let's 
quickly recap whatever we have covered with the help of a short animation here. It will help us to understand or to grasp the concept more clearly. Suppose this is my query which a user wants to execute in Teradata environment. We are running select employee name from db.employee. db is my database, employee is my table. Where employee id is equal to 2. Basically I want to search the name whose employee id is equal to 2. So this query will first of all hit parsing engine. Parsing engine will create a required session. Then it will do a syntax check for your query. Then it will check that whether this table or these columns actually exist or not. And then it will check that whether you have the proper privilege to access this table or not. After doing all these checks, uh, optimizer will create an explain plan to retrieve this particular row. Once our explain plan is created, it is immediately passed to Binet. Now Binet, suppose we have a 4 amp system and all these amps will be connected to Binet. So Binet immediately passes this explain plan to all the amps which is connected to Binet. Now we know that each amp has access to its own virtual disk and suppose our employee table has four rows so this is ma this is how that four rows are distributed across all this disk you can see one row in one disk and in total we have four rows which is distributed uniformly across these four disks now according to the explain plan sent by parsing engine each amp will start looking for employee id is equal to 2 so first of all all this uh, scanning will be done simultaneously and parallelly. So here in this example we can see that AMP2 identifies that it has employee ID is equal to 2. So immediately it will send back that row to parsing engine with the help of PyNet. Whereas remaining AMP they scan and they didn't find any row. So they will send a end transaction step which signifies that they didn't find any row. And all this processing happens parallelly. All these four amps work parallelly and give us the result at the same time. Now parsing engine has the consolidated result of all these four amps and uh, they know that amp2 has identified the row. So whatever is the row returned by amp2 will be given back to user as the answer set. So we will get our final answer as John because this is the correct answer whose employee ID is equal to 2. This is how all the components interact with each other and this is how a single query went inside Teradata architecture and we get our desired result set. I hope now this logical architecture is much more clearer to you guys with the help of this animation. We can correlate or we can see the functioning of these uh, independent components and how they integrate with each other to fetch the row from our disk drives. Tell me if anyone has any doubts, any queries till now. Okay. Yeah, Rajesh, with the help of animation, it is always uh, easy for us to understand the concept. That is why in this training program, you will see a lot of animations in our slides. Okay. So, Let's move to next topic if uh, you guys don't have any questions in this. Next topic is our Teradata Advanced Architecture.